the rods came in. Welcome to Hack a Week. Yep, forged connecting rods from Japan. Uh, actually from Durham, North Carolina. Dave at Combustion Cycles sold me these this week. Same guy that sold me the old VF700S. There's a bit of modification you need to do to the bearings on these. You also need to modify the uh, cylinder skirts a little bit for clearance and we're gonna get into all that stuff but they're a bit lighter weight and uh, I think we should weigh them up and see how much difference there is right now. Okay, let's weigh these guys, the uh, forged aluminum ones. The lightest ones of the stock ones weighed 361 grams. Oh, 270 grams. So that's pretty good. That's, uh, you know, roughly 90 grams lighter. That's nice. So 270 on that one, 271, 270. 269 so they're all pretty close to each other and um, I could probably uh, shave a little bit off from the other ones right here on the uh, the casting flashing there's a little bit there that could be taken away uh, each one of those has a little bit so I can go ahead and do that with a Dremel tool and get them all to where they weigh the same as the lightest one which is 269 grams so before I do anything, I think that's uh, the first thing on the list. Let's go ahead and get them all balanced out, weighing the same. I've got a drum sander wheel on the Dremel, so let's crank this up. Go back to uh, the scale for a second here. We're zeroed out. So there's my lightest one, 269 grams. 270, so I only need to take one gram off this. That's not much. So let's just give this a little pass here and here. Get rid of a little bit of that mold flashing and see where we are. Okay, finally got that one that was 271 down to 270. So I'm within a gram, maybe even less than a gram on... Um, that one's the lightest. Just for the hell of it, let's try it in ounces. I don't know if it'll be any more accurate. 9.5 ounces on that one. 9.5. 9.5. 9.5. Of course, the grams measurement's going to be a lot more accurate because it's down to three decimal places. So, well, sort of. <laughs> 270. 270. This one might be my 271. 270. 269. Close enough. Let's move on. All right, crankshaft bearings. That's uh, going to go next. We'll go ahead and get all of the crankshaft bearings put in the bottom half of the case and in the top half of the case. I've got the timing chain pulled off from the uh, crankshaft temporarily. That way I can put the rods on, put the pistons on the rods uh, with no rings, and then slide the whole cylinder assembly on and make sure I have clearances on the cylinder skirts. I'm probably going to have to grind away a little bit of those to get the uh, the clearance I need as these move around like this. We don't want that banging into the uh, skirt. So let's get the bearings put in here. I'm going to go back to the chart I did way back when and that'll tell me which bearing goes where in here. I've got them all laid out here so I'll go ahead and get those installed now. So let's see, according to my chart I've got a green bearing here, green bearing here, yellow bearing here, green and green. So this one is yellow. You can see the yellow mark on the side. Get that one put in. And then I'll take the other half, the other shell, and that will go in the top half of the case, which I have off to the side over here. Now the rest are pretty easy. They're all green. And on the side, there's the green little paint mark. Get those put in. 
And remember there's a little notch that aligns it and you want them to be nice and flush when you put them in. They only go one way, so I mean it's pretty much a no-brainer. It's pretty obvious. All right, that takes care of the bottom half of the case. Let's get the top half over here. Okay, all of the crankshaft bearings are in place. I've got a little bit of motor oil here and a brush. I'm going to put just a little bit of oil in each one of the bearing shells so that I don't damage them as I move things around here. Before final assembly, I'll actually use some assembly lube, which is designed to uh, help lubricate the bearings on initial startup before you actually get full oil pressure and you don't do any damage to the bearings. Really important that you put stuff together with assembly lube or at least some oil on all of the bearings. So on these forged guys, um, this diameter is going to be the same on all of them. On the, uh, the ones from the original setup, as you recall from the earlier video where I spec'd it all out, they vary a little bit. Honda decided they needed to make sure that the uh, oil clearance was just right. So you have different color bearings because they're different thicknesses to match up to this diameter and to the diameter on the crankshaft. And on my crankshaft, the diameter of these is all the same. So I just need to end up picking a bearing that gives me the right oil clearance. I've got three sets of green bearings and I've got three sets of yellow bearings. So I've got to drill a hole in a set of the green ones and in a set of the yellow ones, put them in, do a plastic gauge check, and find out which set of bearings I need to go with. But I need to uh, measure that little pin right there and then drill a hole in the bearing shell on one side of the bearing shell so that it will insert into there properly. That's going to be a little tricky. So i got to figure out uh, what size that is. I can just get out my um, calipers here and check it that way. Now let's see, I've got it set to inches and it comes out to uh, 175 thousandths, whatever that is. That's you know roughly a 3 sixteenths I think, but We'll get a little more precise with that, and I think I can probably jig something up on my drill press to do that. Uh, I don't think it's going to be super, super critical. It's just there to keep the bearing locked in and keep it from, you know, spinning around um, in the uh, connecting rod. So here's the challenge. How do I get the hole drilled in this bearing shell exactly right? Dead center this way and back and forth. After uh, racking my brain on this one for a while without having a machine shop here in the shop, I realized, well, you know, just uh, get a little creative with a post-it note. Use the sticky side and line it right up on the edge of that bearing. Right on the edge and let's stick it down. And we're just gonna go like this. Take it over to the other edge stick it down and then I'm going to mark where that edge is over here. I can just take a, any, any piece of metal and kind of score it like this and it'll just cut the paper for me right there. So that is the, uh, the distance from edge to edge that piece of paper right there. So if I take that piece of paper off now, let's see, we'll get it a little more manageable by tearing it down here a little bit. Now all I gotta do is fold it in half. Fold it in half right on the mark. We're gonna crease that. And we'll just open this back up. Let's fold it again so we got a good solid mark there. Now I can take that and put it back on the bearing. And just stick it on there. Get it on that edge. Making sure it goes all the way to the other edge. And there we go. Right there on that mark is the center of that bearing. So, and then I can just measure across here with my uh, vernier calipers. Find the center that way and then I'll center punch it. Put it over on the drill press, line it all up and drill it and it should be reasonably close. 
Hey, look at that. First one. Not bad, huh? Nice and flush on the bearing surface there. Lined up pretty good. Pretty good for a post-it note alignment method. All right, so that's a green bearing. Now I'll do the yellow bearing, and then I can put those on the crank, do a little plastic gauge action, and pick a bearing, and then uh, I'm gonna have to order at least one more. If it's the green bearings I need, then I, I need to order one more set of greens. And if it's the yellow ones, I need to order three sets. So, okay, let's do the uh, yellow one and then we'll do some plastic gauge action. All right, the next one's drilled. And uh, one more thing before I put this all together, I need to deburr this a little bit so I don't scratch the crank. It needs to have a little chamfer on it. I can just use a uh, countersink bit or a deburring tool. I don't really have a deburring tool here, but this is all it takes, just a little bit by hand, good enough. Just puts a little bit of a chamfer on that hole so there's not a rough edge that could potentially harm the crankshaft. We'll do that on both sides. Now we'll put them all together and do the plastic gauge thing. Okay, I've got a green piece of plastic gauge here. Let's peel that away from the paper and we're going to put that in the bearing shell here. Make sure it stays in place. Yep, it's going to stay in place. Now what we'll do is get over here on the other side of the crank and carefully place that on there. I'm just going to hold it in place. I'll go ahead and get the lower half on. Make sure I line up my little marks that tell me which side is which. Make sure that they go on the right way because they're machined clamped together and it's very critical that you keep them that way when you uh, reassemble them. There's no oil on here or anything. It's nothing but the plastic gauge. We'll get the nuts on there. And I've got a torque wrench preset to 18 foot-pounds. That should be about right. I don't really... Okay, let's tighten it up until we hear the click. There's one. And that's two. Now let's take it back off and we'll take a look at the plastic gauge and see just what oil clearance we have. Now this one is with the, uh, the yellow bearing. There's the piece of plastic gauge. It stayed stuck to the crankshaft. Now this is with the yellow bearing. Let's get the, the paper gauge up there with the printing on it that tells us what's what. It looks like it's a little bit less than two thousandths of an inch oil clearance, which is just fine. Um, so the yellow bearings would probably be okay. Well, after all that measuring and checking things, uh, I think what I'm going to do is go with the yellow bearings. I've got three sets of the yellows already, and I just need to get one more and I can put the whole thing together. So now that I've decided which bearings I'm going to buy, and I've already ordered them up, I'm going to go ahead and put the rods onto the crankshaft. We'll uh, put the top half of the crankcase on, and then we will start checking for clearances on everything, get some pistons on these uh, on these rods without the piston rings. Slide the whole cylinder assembly on, and check out where things are going to bump into other things and and do some clearancing. All the rods are in place. It's time to set the crankshaft back in, minus the timing chain, so that we can rotate everything around. Easily. Be careful I don't pinch a finger here. Nope, there we go. I've put the crankshaft in a position so that all of the rods are pointing straight up and they're just balanced there for now. The only thing keeping them in place really is the oil on the bearings. Um, a little bit of assembly lube might help a little bit with this. It would keep them from falling down. Uh, all right, 
Let's see if we can get this top case half on without any of the rods moving or getting bumped. This is kind of like that game operation. There we go. We're there. Okay, now we just need to drop the case down all the way. There are some rings on the uh, main shaft of the transmission, some little alignment rings for the bearings. Very, very important that they are in there because they keep everything locked in solid. And as you drop this down, uh, you may notice a little resistance for the case to go into place. Right here it's dropped in on the front okay, but back here it's hanging up. So what you can do is move that shaft back and forth a little bit until it hits the sweet spot where those rings line up with the slots that are in the uh, case. And there it goes. Okay, we're there. So let's give uh, this a little rotation here and see what we got. Looks like everything's clearing down below okay. So now we need to put pistons on each one of the rods with the wrist pin holding it in place. Then we'll slide the cylinders on and we'll check for clearances on the bottom of the cylinder sleeves. I just pulled all the old piston rings off from the pistons. For those of you who have never done this type of stuff before and dealt with piston rings, they're very fragile. Let me show you just how fragile these are. This one is a broken one, but watch this. That's it, they break that easy. They're really, really easy to break, so when you put these on a piston and they're brand new, be really careful, use a piston ring spreader tool. We'll get to that in another video, but just want you to know ahead of time, piston rings are very fragile. So cylinders one and four are at top dead center. High up as the rod will go. I'm gonna put a little bit of oil inside here where the wrist pin goes. This is a wrist pin. That's what holds the, uh, the piston to the connecting rod. So it'll slide into the piston and then go through the connecting rod and out the other side of the piston. <clears throat> so let's see how easily this is going to go together. I'm not sure uh, how these things slide in here, if it's just a free fit or, uh, yeah, they float around. So shouldn't be too bad. So we're going to just go ahead and uh, one thing I just noticed, there is an arrow on the piston, and that indeed must go a certain way. I need to check my manual and find out about that. Um, I'm guessing that arrow is going to be pointing forward in the engine. Yes, indeed. After a quick consult, the arrow points forwards towards the exhaust side. So let's go ahead and put this piston onto this first connecting rod. There's still a, uh, a little clip inside this side that holds the wrist pin in place. The clip is missing from this side, so I'll load it in from this side. And just kind of peek through there and line up the hole and then just wiggle it through and there we go, that's one. Hey, how's it going? Okay, let's go ahead and get this next one. 
line up the hole, give it a little push. Make sure it's in all the way. Okay, let's rotate it around now. And we'll get two and three at top dead center. Be very careful that the pistons don't catch on the top half of the case. Okay, those are at top dead center. Let's go ahead and put those in. So we're ready to figure out where the rods are going to bump into. Okay, how do we figure out where the rods are going to bump into these piston skirts? Well, I can take a white paint pen. I could use some machinist's uh, blue dye. It's also called dicum. And um, I'll just use a white paint pen and I'm going to put some paint right on the skirt right here. Right in the area where the connecting rod will be bumping into it. And then what I'll do is I'll put it in place and then move the engine around until the rods bump into this and then pull it back off and hopefully I can see just where they're bumping into the skirts and then we can machine away a little bit of the skirt to give it the proper clearance. Okay, so let's get two of the pistons a little bit higher than the other ones. So we'll go for the center ones first. We'll go ahead and lower the cylinders on and the part with this extra metal right here that pokes out, that goes forwards. That's toward the exhaust side. I'll line up all the studs and I'll grab it right here in the middle and get the uh, center pistons going into the cylinders first. It's a little bit tricky. Kind of need to cock it a little bit sideways so that you can get one piston and then the other. Okay, there's that one. Almost. <laughs> a bit of work. When I put this together with the uh, rings in place, that's what's going to be a big challenge. Okay, there we go. They're all in. Let's push this all the way down till it's right on the deck, right down on the crank case. And I may need to rotate the engine a bit so nothing is bumping into the piston skirts. And right now, all of the pistons are the same height, so what we'll do now is we'll just turn the engine by hand back and forth a little bit and you'll you'll see the whole cylinder assembly bump up a little bit as it bumps into those skirts. Now that would be the rods bumping into the skirts. And it's doing it here on the back side of the skirt right now. Rotate it the other way and it's in the front side probably on these two right here. Well, let's just pull it off. flip it over and see what we got. Well, uh, it's a bit hard to tell. There's a little mark right there. I don't see anything on that one. Um, maybe a little mark right there. Um, there's a little piece missing. So that method didn't really help me too much. But you know, what I can do here is just pretty much figure that the rod is coming up right through the center line of the cylinder. So if I measure the width of the rod and I just take out a little bit of metal right here and right here, uh, the width of the rod and then just take it down maybe four millimeters and put it all back together and see what kind of clearance we have. And uh, if everything clears okay, we'll just take it from there. Uh, I really wish I could see just how much clearance there is going on because Ideally, you should have at least 40 to 60 thousandths of clearance between anything that's, you know, swinging around on the crankshaft uh, in relation to anything that's solid like the crankcase or the piston skirts. Um, I've done some of this on VW engines when you put a stroker crank in 
and it's a little bit different because so many people have done it that everybody knows right where to take off uh, some of the metal. Let's see if I can get a little light on this and uh, you'll see what's going on. You can see that part of the rod right there coming up and that's the part that's bumping into the piston skirt right there. So what I could do is measure that, um, take a measurement from the deck of the top of the crankcase to that portion of the rod and then uh, come over here and measure from the deck of the cylinder assembly to the bottom of the skirt, do a little bit of math and figure out just how much I need to grind away to get proper clearance. Well, another good week of progress on the engine this time, which is a good thing because I've been waiting forever to try to figure out what to do about these connecting rods. So it's good to have the aluminum ones on there all balanced, got the oil clearances figured out. I ordered the other set of bearings I need and we figured out what we need to do to clearance the cylinders. I think I'll just take these to work. I have access to a Bridgeport milling machine. I'll do it down there. I don't want to take too much off from the cylinders, just enough so that they clear the rods. And what I mean by that is right here you can see uh, I could just shave off everything, but I don't want to do that. I just want to take a little bit out right here. It'll be like, it'll end up being like a notch, just like that. So I'll do that this week. Next week we'll fit everything on there make sure that the clearances are okay, and we'll move on from there. I'm not really sure what's next, but hey, it's progress, and that's what matters. So, thanks for watching, thanks for the donations, and until next time. For now, I can put it together with three yellow bearings, one green bearing, that'll be just fine. Phone's ringing. <laughs>